Okay, I want to do a quick thing about, I've talked about this before, but I think I buried it in other videos that are, um, I think I buried it in like a two hour long video with the death to, what I called the death to Einstein University somewhere in there. Anyway, I think I buried it and I want to do another video where I bring this, just this certain aspect to highlight it. And this is based, this is sort of about the twin paradox, but it's about actually about general relativity in general. Uh, general relativity in general. Um, you know, the, the twin paradox, when you have a stay-at-home twin on Earth and then the um, you got the allegedly traveling twin goes out into the universe and circles around and comes back to Earth. He, go, he goes out in the universe, significant fraction of light speed, circles around, comes back to Earth, and, you know, which twin is older? In the standard spiel, is, well, it's the, it's the, uh, we know it's the traveling twin, uh, because he experiences forces that the stay-at-home twin on Earth doesn't experience. So the traveling twin's the one that ages faster because he's uh, he experiences acceleration, you know, time dilation effects and everything. We know he's the one that's experiencing it. You can't have reciprocity because he's experiencing these forces. And one of the twins obviously has to be, if there's time dilation, one of the twins definitely has to be... Uh, older and one has to be younger. They have to get, they definitely have to get out of sync. And the way you determine it is, well, the traveling twin experiences acceleration and stuff. And um, so that's the one that's obviously comes back younger because he's, he's experienced time dilation. So he's younger than the twin on earth when he gets back home. So, you know, it's, we, we solve it, you know, he just, he's the one that leaves the reference frame. And anyway, so you're appealing to acceleration. You say that breaks the symmetry. But when you appeal to the acceleration, regardless of whether you say, oh, he leaves the reference frame, you try to, like I've done another video, like I've said in other videos, where you, you try to rephrase acceleration so you're not using acceleration. So you can try to pretend that you don't have to take it into general relativity and um, you can keep it in special relativity by saying, oh, he, he, he leaves the reference, one twin leaves the reference frame, in which case, like, you're still automatically assuming which one's moving. But anyway... Let's let's pretend that you're correct, and you know, let's let's go into general relativity with it, though. So, you know, I'm I'm the twin. I'm traveling in my rocket. My twin, my rocket has a steering wheel. When I turn the steering wheel this way, there's a, like an attitude thruster that fires over that way. So, like, you know, my rocket ship turns that direction. So, you you know, the the stay-at-home twin says, "Oh, we know when you get back home, you're going to be the one that's." actually younger because you're experiencing the forces that I'm not experiencing because you're out in the universe traveling around in your rocket and stuff. But the, you know, the twin in the rocket, according to relativity, he can say, oh, what are you talking about? I'm not experiencing forces. You're the one experiencing the forces because all I'm doing is sitting here in my rocket and when I turn this steering wheel, you know, and this thruster over here fires, I don't move. It's like this the firing of this thruster generates a gravitational field that pulls the rest of the universe this way. So when you say I turn around and stuff, all I do is turn my steering wheel and it generates a gravitational field that pulls the entire universe, reorients the entire universe. So, you know, it turns, it the, the universe revolves around me until the, until I'm facing the earth again. So when I, when I leave earth, I fire my rockets that basically generates a gravitational field to the rear of me that pulls the Earth and the universe back away from me. So I, I never move. I'm just like, what are you talking about? I experience extra forces. You're the one experiencing the forces. You know, I fire my rockets, and depending on which which rocket fires, there's a gravitational field that pulls the entire universe this side or that side or spins me around, spins the Earth around so that, you know, the Earth's behind me and it falls away behind me when I fire my rocket and then I fire another rocket and the earth spins back around this way, you know, and then I fire and then it goes, the earth starts going this way. That's all because, you know, when I do my attitude thrusters and stuff, that generates a gravitational field that pulls the entire universe around. That's, what are you talking about? I experience extra forces. You know what you're talking about. So how can we say which one of us is actually older? That's what happens when you drag, drag the twins paradox into general relativity. You know, it's the, 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 the twin in the rocket. You drag it into general relativity. 
and the twin in the rocket's going to go, oh, what do you mean extra forces? You're, well, I don't know what you're talking about. You're the one that's experiencing the forces. You know, that, that jerk I feel when I go like that, that's just because that gravitational field that pulls the rest of the universe also pulls me that direction. But my ship doesn't move or anything. What are you talking about? That's the gravitational field that, like, just comes on momentarily while I fire my rockets. And, and like, you know, you can say that I'm being insane here, but I'm not the one being insane. That's what relativity says. That that is relative. That's general relativity. That's that's what you say when you drag the twins paradox into general relativity. It does not break the asymmetry by resorting to acceleration. This is relativity here. Albert Einstein. This is a quote from it. This is page sixty nine of this version. At least it's chapter chapter twenty, part two in general relativity. Right here, I'm reading from this paragraph right here. This is what the this is what the guy in one of the... This is what the twin will say. It, he's not specifically referring to twins, but it's... Th this is what the guy in the... He, it's in the carriage, according to Einstein, the, the railway in the carriage. This is what the guy in the carriage says when he applies his brakes and feels the jerk. You know, I, Albert Einstein, this is Albert Einstein's own words. He might also interpret his experience thus... My body of reference, the carriage, or the rocket in our case, remains permanently at rest. This, this, can also, this, is the tw this is basically the twin saying this. I'll start over. This is the twin. This is what the twin says according to Albert Einstein. My body of reference, the carriage, or the rocket ship, it doesn't say or the rocket ship, that's my interjection. My body of reference, or the rocket ship, remains permanently at rest. With reference to it, however, there exists, during the period of application of the brakes, a gravitational field which is directed forwards and which is variable with respect to time. Under the influence of this field, the embankment together with the earth moves non-uniformly in such a manner that their original velocity in the backwards direction is continuously reduced. What that says is, when the when the rocket fight, when the guy in the rocket, the twin in the rocket, pushes a button or jerks his steering wheel or whatever, his rocket fires, and what that does, it generates a momentary gravitational field that pulls the entire universe, either like if the Earth is behind the guy and he wants to go home, he fires his rocket to turn around, that gravitational field that is generated when he pulls the, uh, when he fires his thruster, it's there's a gravitational field that spins the entire earth around the guy's sh the twin ship and then he fires more thrusters to head back so he keeps on going he never moves according to the twin in the rocket he never moves the entire universe spins around him that's how he gets back to earth and that little jerk he feels when he goes to the side or when he goes like that and stuff that's just because of that momentary gravitational field so and and the guy on the earth experiences it too that's that's exactly what that paragraph i just read says i i pulled my thing out but so it's it's that that is completely that, actually it's not insane it, no it, there's nothing insane about that it's perfectly reasonable um i said that was page 66 so, so, so you know the standard spiel is that's how you resolve the twins paradox you Pull, uh, it's just one guy leaves the other's reference frame. There's no paradox here. Yeah, there still is a paradox because when you drag it into general relativity where it belongs, you find out the response is exactly that paragraph I just read. The, tw the twin in the rocket says, no, I'm not experiencing any acceleration or anything. You are. There's like a, the, my firing of my rocket generates a gravitational field that pulls the entire universe around, pulls the rest of the universe around. I never move. You're the one that moves. So, so where is the, where is the paradox resolved? I want Where is the twins paradox resolved? It's unresolved. Yet we know one of the twins has to be older. But anyway, the, the whole point is that's completely. In a way, it's insane, but it's not insane because it fits in with the rest of the insanity of relativity. It's it's not insane within the context of relativity, but relativity itself is an insane theory. But that that idea is no more insane than all the other stuff in there. So, 
you know, st straight from the words of Albert Einstein himself. It generates a gravitational field, the momentary gravitational field that acts on the entire universe. That's the perspective of general relativity when you're talking about the twins or when you're talking about a guy on a train and the train stops suddenly. It's not the train that stops suddenly. The, the brakes on the train generate a gravitational field that pulls the earth, retards the motion of the earth. And so they, they, they eventually come to rest. It's because it's, it's, it's straight from Einstein's own mouth. So it's not me saying these insane things. It's Albert Einstein saying this insane stuff. So anyway, I just I had that buried in another video. I just wanted to I just wanted to say that. So I'm done. Okay, I did think of one other thing I wanted to point out. You know, you could rebut me saying, oh, um, you know, I talk about geocentrism and stuff. That, 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 what, what Einstein says is no more insane than me saying that the entire universe revolves around the Earth. It is a bit more insane because um, why is it a bit more insane? I don't know why it's a bit more insane. It's more insane, though. Just take my word for it. It's more no, it, it it's it's because he's talking about like generating a momentary gravitational field when I put on the brakes on a spaceship or fire a rocket on a spaceship or put on the brakes on a train that generates a gravitational field um, that acts upon the entire universe. If if that's not more absurd than the Earth being at the center of the universe, what what's possibly what what can you say is possibly more absurd? I, I mean that's about as absurd as you get if that's if that how is that not more absurd than the earth being at the center of the universe that I can generate a momentary gravitational field from my little train that like acts upon the entire universe you can say well it doesn't act upon the entire universe yes it does act upon the entire universe to do what Einstein's talking about in there he even says it he doesn't say it acts upon just the embankment he mentions the the earth and if if it's acting on the earth the Earth still has to, while this momentary gravitational field is acting on the Earth, the entire universe still has to maintain its position relative to the Earth because so that the entire universe has to move around me, rotate around me. So that gravitational field has to act upon the entire universe, not just the Earth. It's a if if I put on the brakes on a train or whatever and do what Einstein says, that gravitational field is not just localized. It has to. It has to act upon the entire universe, and that if, if if you know how 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 would putting on the brakes by what possible mechanism can you would this guy be justified in thinking that how, how does that generate a gravitational field Sci scientifically tell me how pushing brakes on a train generates a gravitational field that acts on the entire universe. How, how does that happen? Give me a scientific method, a scientific way that can possibly happen. Um, I, 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 so so if, if, you know, if you're going to say, well, your, your idea that the Earth is at the center of the universe, that's more absurd than what, I, what you were saying Einstein says. No, it's not. It's not more absurd. How could it possibly be? How could the Earth being at the center of the universe possibly be more absurd than the quotation that I just quoted from Einstein, Einstein's book. Uh, anyway, so, I um, just want to try to think if there's anything else I want to add before I shut down, have to come back. I'll have to come back anyway, I always do. Um, so, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it for now. Seemed like there was one other thing when I jumped back on here I wanted to point out. Oh well, that's that's got to be it, I guess. Something I, I'm just something's nagging in my mind. I didn't say everything I wanted to. Um, gravitational field pulls at the entire universe. Yeah, that's all I want to say. Oh, now, now I remembered what I wanted to say. I want, I wanted to say, <laughs> I wanted to rant against Einstein. It's like, you know, Albert Einstein lauded as one of the the greatest, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, genius and scientific thinker in history. 
you, you know, like, oh, he's a genius, he's a scientific god and everything, and everybody bows down before him and everything, and like, he says, yet he says something like that, and yet I'm the nut for saying that the earth might be at the center of the universe. Like people, there's, I'm the crackpot because I say that the Earth might be at the center of the universe, and then Einstein, greatest genius ever, says something more insane than than that the Earth is at the center of the universe. He also says, you know, this I'm not bashing him on this part, but he also agrees that from from one point of view, one reference frame, the Earth is at the center of the universe. You you just can't say that it definitely is at the center of the universe, or it absolutely is. He he explicitly says that. Einstein explicitly says that, and, and yet, um, you know, I'm a I'm a nut. I'm a I'm a crackpot and a crazy nut for saying that the Earth is absolutely definitely at the center of the universe. I'm the nut. Einstein's not the nut for saying that, you know, when the when a train puts on its brakes or when a rocket ship fires its rockets, it generates a gravitational field that acts on the entire universe. It's like, guy in the rocket's perfectly valid, say, justified saying that, according to Einstein. Yeah, I'm the nutcase for saying that, yeah, well, the Earth's absolutely at the center of the universe. You know, it's kind of a contest. Who is saying the more insane thing? You know, me or the greatest genius in scientific history? Who says the more insane thing? I mean, why am I the crackpot and Einstein's the freaking genius? Whatever. I'm, I'm not saying comparing myself to Einstein and saying I need to be a genius. I'm saying I'm saying this thing, this people say is insane, and yet Einstein says something that's equally insane, and yet like they bow down before him as a god, and like spit on they they spit on one guy for saying like a, a similar. It's like a similar a very similar thing to what Einstein was saying it's like it's it's saying that the earth is at the center of the universe Einstein explicitly said that's true for one from one viewpoint I mean I I've quoted it in other videos and everything but you know yet I'm I'm the people like me that say that the earth is at the center of the universe we're the nutcases that you know spit upon spit upon us but you know bow down before Einstein when he's basically saying the same thing only he's saying it in a more insane way than I'm saying it and yet yet he's the genius and worshiped as a god and other people like me are spit upon like it makes a whole lot of sense I, that's the other thing I wanted to add I'm done now all right, I did have one other thing I wanted to say about that. I'm still going on when I start thinking about these kind of things. It kind of irritates me, but you know, why? Why? What makes it genius when I when when geocentrists basically agree with Einstein and say say something that like Einstein himself says? Why is it genius when Einstein says it? And yet, when people like me say it, it's completely whacked out, and we're insane, and you know, we need to squelch us and like shut that guy up because he's like he's a nut. And, and yet, I'm basically saying the same thing Einstein says. And again, I'm referring to the the quote where he's like, uh, um, says basically that the Earth is at the center of the universe from one point of view. Um, you know, and the the only the the only part we the where the only part where we disagree with geocentrists disagree with Einstein is where he says from a certain viewpoint the Earth is at the center of the universe. Like, you know, it's it's okay when Einstein says it as long as he adds that little from a certain viewpoint. But when people like me say no, you're wrong. There is no from a certain viewpoint. We are insane, and yet Einstein is a genius. And yet the evidence, the evidence is in favor of geocentrists. Well, I, uh, I've talked about that in other videos. I mean, I go on for about an hour and two or three other videos. Um, I don't think I need to get into that here, where the evidence supports geocentrism. But it, the, the old, you know, talking about. I guess I will get into it now. The base, the base, the base, base hypothesis of relativity, except it's not really a hypothesis; it's an unproven assumption because they can't prove it. the The base hypothesis of relativity, both the special and general, is that the laws of physics are the same in all reference frames. That is, that's a that's relativity's base hypothesis. Um, you you have to prove that before you can say that anything else in relativity is true. 
You you ha you have to basically say you basically have to prove that base hypothesis before Einstein can validly say from a certain viewpoint the earth is at the center of the universe. We both say Einstein and geocentrists both say the earth is at the center of the universe. Einstein says from a certain viewpoint the earth is at the center of the universe. But the only way Einstein can say that is to prove relativity's base, base hypothesis that the laws of physics are the same in all reference frames, which has not been done yet. It's just assumed to be true. You can say, well, what are you talking about? It's not been proven yet. You know, I go into it in other videos. How do you prove some, how do you prove a hypothesis that says the laws of physics are the same in all reference frames? You go out into those different reference frames and perform the same experiments across all those reference frames. And if you get the same results, or, or if you, you go into a significant fraction, or, or even not, not a significant fraction, what is it? A, a, like a, a number that gives you like a, a, a result that you can trust as being true, a significant, that, that has statistical significance. You go into that number of reference frames and you perform the same identical experiments and make sure you get the same identical results. And then you can say that, yes, it looks like the laws of physics are the same in all reference frames. So, you know, Einstein is saying from a certain geocentrist, the Earth is at the center of the universe. Einstein, from a certain viewpoint, the Earth is at the center of the universe. Einstein can't add that from a certain viewpoint yet. The experiments have only been proved the experiments have only been carried out from within an earth-based reference frame. You have not gone out into a statistically significant number of reference frames and performed the same experiments and gotten the same results. Hasn't been done yet. You've only done those from inside the earth or ver fr from inside an earth-based reference frame or you know, basically, you've if if we're both saying the Earth is at the center of the universe, and Einstein wants to say from a certain viewpoint, all we can say right now is the Earth is at the center of the universe because we've 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 performed those experiments and gotten the expected results from within the frame that says the Earth is at the center of the universe. It's it, you can't even say, oh, we've done those in multiple reference frames because here on Earth because you're still, even if you think you're doing them in multiple reference frames here from Earth, you're still doing them at the center of the universe, which is what you're trying to get away from. It's like, uh, it, it, anyway, I go into it in other videos. That's basically what it is that, you know, I, so Einstein, geocentrists basically, dis, basically agree with Einstein. The only difference is Einstein says from a certain viewpoint and geocentrists say no 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 not from a certain viewpoint absolutely at the center of the universe and um and the evidence favors the geocentrist right now all the experimental observational evidence favors the geocentrist leans toward the geocentrist and yet Einstein is the genius that's that's just what I that's all I wanted to say like so like anyway that's that's my whole thing I'm done okay <laughs> Back in. See, the geocentrist, Al Albert Einstein wants to go, you know, from a certain viewpoint and just pr assume that that's true. The geocentrist is saying, now hold on a minute. You're n we're not going to let you do that. We're yanking you back and making you follow the scientific method to prove your base hypothesis. We're not letting Albert Einstein get away with the notion or the assumption. He's just, what Albert Einstein and the relatives are doing is basically saying we're just going to pretend we're just going to assume this hypothesis is true without performing any of the nest we're without following the scientific method we're just going to assume that the base hypothesis of relativity is true and we're going to run with it and say relativity is correct geocentrists that believe the earth is absolutely at the center of the rest of the universe are saying now hold on a minute, get back here, we will not tolerate you bypassing the scientific method. Get back here and do your experiments, and then if you get the same results and you, you, 
get the results you expect and duplicate them in multiple reference frames, then we'll let you say from a certain viewpoint the Earth is at the center of the universe and we'll like withdraw our claim that it's absolutely. That's what geocentrists are doing is saying, hold on a minute, you cannot do that. Get back here, you're doing an illegal maneuver bypassing the scientific method. Geocentrists are like the scientific police where they're saying, no, you're, you, we're not letting you do that. You're d doing an illegal move. Get back here and do your experiments. I demand that you follow the scientific method. That's what geocentrists are saying. Because, because they're, the base hypothesis of relativity explicitly stated in, in Albert Einstein's relativity, the laws of physics are the same in all reference frames. That's a hypothesis. Of, of course, it's called the rel it's called the principle of relativity because it, it's a principle because they're not calling it a hypothesis because they know it's not been proven. A principle is something that's assumed that has not been proven. That's what a principle is. That's why it's called the principle of relativity. Instead of and you know it's not called the law of relativity. It's called you know that's the base the base principle of relativity is actually a hypothesis that has not been proven through the scientific method. And, and geocentrists are calling Albert Einstein and the relatives on that, saying, "No, no, no! Get back here! Do the scientific method." You claim to be scientists, do the scientific method, and then make your claim that from a certain viewpoint. That, that, that's why, you know, if nothing else I say is true, this is true and uh, about relativity being false. If nothing else I say convinces anyone that relativity is not true, this is absolutely true. Relativity has not followed the scientific method. And that's why, that's basically one of the main reasons I call, I, lean towards geocentrism is because geocentrism is the most scientifically honest or the most scientifically rigid or whatever. This is basically geocentrists are the people demanding that the scientific method be followed. That, that's basically what an absolute geocentrist is. So that, that's why geocentrism, according, you know, I say in other videos, is the most scientifically, I call it the most scientifically honest stance, I don't know if that's the right term for it, but it's the, it's the, it's the, it, it, anyway, that, that's basically all I want to say now, I think I truly am done, but who knows, okay, and I'm back again, I'm never done, i never done, I never shut up or never stop thinking about this stuff, but, you know, the, the relativist will say, the reason we have not done what you demand, and, you know, try to, prove the hypothesis of relativity as you call it is because it can't be proven the hypothesis the the principle of relativity it's assumed to be, it's assumed to be true because relativists believe that it cannot be proven within the framework of relativity no that cannot be proven if if relativity is if relativity is correct it cannot be proven and you'll get the same results in all reference frames because I'm, I'm demanding that they get out there and distinguish between that the Earth is at, this, is at the center of the universe or not. The relativist will say, we can't prove that. That's something that can't be proven. And it can't be proven because relativity says it can't be proven. Because if it's proven, it disproves relativity. That's why a relativist assumes it is true. Because if, it's, if it can be proven, then relativity cannot be true. So, so, of course, a relativist is going to rebut by saying, we can't prove that. It's something that can't be proven, so we're not going to bother trying and just assume that it's true. That's what the relativist will say, and that's what the relativist has to say, because he believes in relativity, and according to relativity, the... According to, see, that's what's so stupid about it. According to relativity, the principle of relativity, the hypothesis of relativity, cannot be proven according to relativity. Thus, they have to call it a principle because it cannot be proven. Otherwise, it disproves relativity. And yet, my contention, it, well, it's not my contention, it's the obvious contention, that it can be proven because if there is an absolute reference frame, which is what absolute geocentrists claim, then it can be proven. You, you can, 
you you will be able to prove whether or not there is an absolute reference frame that that um and and that the earth is not at the center of the universe if you go out into the universe the claim that the the way astronomical observations say that the earth is at the center of the universe the way you get the earth out of the center of the universe is by saying it's called the cosmological principle you say that the every point in the universe from that point it will look like it is at the center of the universe but how do you prove that go out into the universe to a significant statistically statistically significant number of different points in the universe and make your observations and if it looks the same from every one of those points then you've proven that you've proven the cosmological principle the cosmological principle is sort of tied to the principle of relativity um, neither one according to the according to the internal logic of those principles and those theories neither one of those can be proven according to those the internal logic of that because because if they are if they are if they can be proven or disproven then the theory falls apart so so they just have to be assumed to be true so but but the the point of relative relativists and the geocentrists is that if we are truly at the center of the universe absolutely at the center of the universe in an absolute reference frame at the center of the universe you will be able to go out into the universe and prove that we're not you'll be able to disprove the relative the geocentrists who say that we are at the center of the universe definitely um so so that, that that's that's why i say I, that's another reason i say i lean towards geocentrism because i could be wrong i have not it's not the the battle people think this battle was settled like back in uh with galileo and everything in the church and everything oh, it was settled back then no it's never been settled all those things they put forward as proof that you know this proves that the earth is revolving and all this stuff it proves nothing none of none of that says one way or the other whether the earth is or isn't at the center of the universe it's it's nonsense it, it just it, it was it was never dis it was the 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 thing was said to have been settled but it's never been settled look into it if you truly care to understand things look into it look into these theories and they have the debate has never been settled it is still open to debate and open to questions yes i want to drag us back into the dark ages so because we need to have this debate again because i believe this debate is stifling scientific progress it's holding us up because the the people that are actually out there doing experiments and coming up with technologies and everything they're operating on us on the assumption of relativity and everything and that we're not at the center of the universe i believe that when we get onto the geocentric frame or we settle the question once and for all we will advance scientifically beyond where we are now now we're, we're kind of in a holding pattern because we are we are trapped in the relative in a mindset of relativity we've been trapped into it by albert einstein we we are i see i'm a i i also write science fiction and fantasy and one of the stories i have always always wanted to write and i don't, I don't know if i ever will or not but I have an idea for a story where aliens deliberately go around to like developing planets and they seed the idea of relativity to keep the inhabitants of these planets from advancing scientifically. Um, that, that's, that's one of my story ideas. I doubt I'll ever get along, around to writing it, but it, it's like it's an idea that the idea of relativity is like a a barrier that the or a harness or what or a it's like it's a handicap that the aliens go around putting on developing planets to keep them at a certain level to keep them from reaching a certain level and I, I believe that once this debate is settled we will advance scientifically um well we're, we're you talking about we're advancing all the time no no we're not we have been we we have basically been going down the wrong path for the last hundred years I, I believe we took a wrong turn when albert einstein was invited in and allowed to his idea I, by albert einstein i mean his ideas when his ideas were invited in and to take roost it, it basically put a stifled us for we've been stifled by it 
relativity stifles things because if if you're operating under the assumption that there is no absolute reference frame, it's going to make a difference. If you're operating under the assumption that there isn't one, and there actually is, you are missing something, and you're go I don't even know what, how we would advance scientifically, what sort of advances we might make, but it, it will make a difference. It makes a difference whether we are in an absolute reference frame and whether we are at the center of the universe or not. These things make a difference, and they have not been proven and we're operating under, under the assumption that they have been proven and I believe that's part of the problem with modern science where you know you're talking about a conflict between quantum mechanics and relativity and <clears throat> all these other things but with dark matter and everything and I, I believe it's because of relativity we're operating under the false assumption that we are that there is no absolute reference frame and there is and you know I can't go out and do these and develop these technologies the people that are actually out there doing these things and doing the grunt work and actually developing technologies are doing it based on a faulty assumption and they don't know it so they're like they're missing they're they're I, I don't even know where we would be or what sort of things we would be but relativity would go out the door and who knows what would happen from there if you if you get on the right if you're on the wrong track and you get on the right track you're going to get where you're going a lot faster than if you're on the wrong track um so that's now i'm basically done but who knows maybe i'm not we'll see stay tuned i told you i am never done i'm never done when i say i'm done i just go on and on i'm like the energizer bunny but Back, back to that story I, did, I was talking about. Yes, I was saying that, you know, in my story, Albert Einstein was going to be basically an alien that was put here to to uh, stifle. I, I'm looking for a better word. Stifle or harness or, um, or uh, put a barrier up so we couldn't advance more. That, that, was, that, was, that was an aspect of my story. I'm just giving out an idea here in case anyone else wants to take it and run with it. But it was basically Albert Einstein in my story was an alien that came to earth to plant the idea of relativity to keep us from advancing that's that's basic i've just had this idea in my this that story idea in my mind for a long time i think it was either going to be i think it was going to be like a novel a not, uh, not a novel not a short story but something in between but I, i've had that idea for a long time i just i just wanted to put it out there i, don't, I doubt i'll ever get around to writing that because i kind of don't really have any real interest writing it but I that may change who knows but yes it was about Albert Einstein being an alien who was put here to hold us back so anyway anyway I'm done now I'm just getting annoying right <laughs> back again um, but no what I want to read you is relativity I was talking about the logic of relativity if it, it goes like the logic of why relativity is true according to the relativists is if the hypothesis of relativity is true it if relativity is if relativity is true the hypo i mean if relativity in general the special and the general theories are true then the principle of relative the hypothesis of relativity cannot possibly be disproven so we're not going to bother trying because we know that relativity is true. It's circular reasoning. It's like it's it's like it's a self-validating thing that and and it all begins with if relativity is true. And uh, so you have to you know if relativity is true then that principle of relativity can if relativity is pr true, then the hypothesis of relativity, basically the laws of physics are the same in all reference frames, cannot be proven. Therefore, we, be we believe relativity is true because it fits all the observational evidence. That's the observational evidence we have is what you would expect if relativity was true. Therefore, we are going to elevate the hypothesis of relativity to a principle because we can't prove it because we know relativity is true. So it's a principle and so relativity is de facto true but it all begins with if relativity is correct if relativity is true and what would it mean if relativity is false it would mean there's an absolute reference frame so you have 
anyway, it it doesn't it doesn't work because you can disprove that hypothesis. Um, you don't have to follow relativity's circular logic. You stand from outside it and say, look, you're saying if relativity is true and you're doing this self-validating thing, but you're you're just like you're. You're pretending that you can't detect the absolute reference frame if relativity is true. And, and so you're just lumping the absolute reference frame in with all the other ones and saying that, you know, even if we find the absolute reference frame, we're not going to be able to disprove it. So, so it has to be one reference frame among many. So we're not even going to bother hunting for it because we know even if we find it, it's just in with relativity. But but that doesn't work because if you have an absolute reference frame, you can say, no, um, we're not lumping this in with all the other ones. This is an absolute reference frame. You can disprove it. It's not the the hypothesis of relativity is only is some is only can only, the hypothesis of relativity is something that can only be how do I say this that. The hypothesis of relativity can only not be disproven if you assume that it that it cannot be disproven and that there is no absolute reference frame. You you have to make the assumption, but meanwhile you can stand outside it and say, "Hold on here, we can prove that there would be an absolute reference frame, and um, and we don't have if we prove it, we don't have to pretend that relativity is correct and just lump it in with all these other ones." Because, because, like I said, it's not just if there is an absolute reference frame, then according to the Michelson-Morley experiments, that means that the Earth is motionless. So, so, and if the Earth is motionless, it must be at the center of the universe because that's what all the astronomical evidence says. And the only way to avoid the astronomical evidence that we're not at the center of the universe, that we are at the center of the universe, is to pretend the cosmological principle is true that every point in space looks like it's the center of the universe. But if you go out, if the Earth is at the center of the universe, see, of the two, the cosmological principle will be the easier of the two to disprove. So if you go out into the universe away from the center and find that it starts looking different from other points in the universe, it's like no, those other points don't look like there is at, cent at the center, you'll still be able to say, hey, Earth must be at the center. So the cosmological principle will be the easiest of the two to disprove. It can be disproven. And once you disprove the cosmological principle, you've sort of almost disproven the principle of relativity because... Um, I'm losing my train of thought here and I'm getting long-winded and stuff. Um, be be because once you say... that Once you get out there and you say that well, the earth is not at the center of the universe or it is at the center of the universe you're going to say it is at the center of the universe then you're going to say uh, well then Mick Michelson Morley was um was proving that the earth is not moving you, you know so it kind of it kind of cascades once you disprove either the principle of relativity or the cosmological principle uh you, you've disproven them, and the cosmological principle is almost sort of below the principle of relativity, so you will be able to disprove the cosmological principle by going out into the universe. And you'll, because what, I, what I'm trying to say is the principle of relativity is connected to the cosmological principle, and if, um, if the cosmological principle goes away, then the principle of relativity has to go away because because the instant the cosmological principle goes away relativity has nothing to chain itself to because if you, if the principle of re, if the cosmological principle you get out of the universe and say well, wait a minute every point doesn't look the same from from out here so you know if it looks like from the earth if it looks like things are at this if if from the pers from from observations on Earth, the astronomical observations say we're at the center of the universe, and then you move out away from the center of the universe, and suddenly you say, "Well, all these points don't look. You know, it doesn't look like this points at the center of the universe. Therefore, the cosmological principle must 
be false. And once, once the cosmological principle is proven false, that means we are at the center of the universe, which means that the interpretation of the Michelson-Morley interferometer experiments that say that the Earth is not moving, you have to go with the interpretation that the Earth is not moving. See, Einstein and his followers, they, they chose to interpret when the interferometer experiments Michelson-Morley first came up and were showing that, you could either interpret them as saying that the Earth is not moving or you could interpret them from a relativistic viewpoint. And the relativistic viewpoint won out. I, I, I was flipping off there, but the relativistic viewpoint won out. But as I said, this interp the, the non-moving interpretation is still open to debate. And once you disprove the cosmological principle, relativity goes out the door. It's like it's relativity is like chained to the cosmological principle. And once you once you take away the cosmological principle, the principle of relativity is going to go flying off into space away from us. And you're going to have to go with the alternate explanation for Michelson Morley that the Earth is not moving because if we're at the center of the universe, we can't be moving. So. Um, you know, what are you going to say? They're, oh, we're only at the center of the universe for a short time right now. And then we're like, we just happen to be here at the time we're taking these measurements and stuff. And we're going to move away from it. You know, either we are or we aren't. And the, the cosmological principle is going to settle it. So even if you say that you want to pretend that, oh, we can't disprove the principle of relativity or the hypothesis of relativity. So we're going to call it a principle. You can disprove it simply by that. That's another reason I say you need to carry these experiments you need to perform these experiments away from the center of the universe, which allegedly is Earth, to be because anyway, um, hopefully, I'm done. I really think I am really done this time. So, so to reiterate, the cosmological principle, if you pretend you can't disprove the principle of relativity, you can disprove the cosmological principle, because the cosmological principle doesn't talk about reference frames. It just says that every point, the cosmological principle is basically every point in space looks like it's at the center of the universe. And, that, and that's because our observations from the Earth look like we're at the center of the universe. Therefore, we need to say, well, every point, we need the cosmological principle to avoid saying that we are at the center of the universe because that's what the ob astronomical observations say and so that's why, why else do you think we have a cosmological principle someone came up with it and they came up with it because the astronomical evidence says that we're at the center of the universe and somebody out there didn't want to believe that and didn't like it so they came up with this cosmological principle that every point looks like it's at the center of the universe and, and that's easy enough to disprove go to a statistic statistically significant number of those points and make your observations. Do is, Does it still look like that point is at the center of the universe? If it does, the cosmological principle is valid. If it ever, if that point doesn't look like it's at the center of the universe, you don't get the same ob uh, astronomical observations that you get on Earth. That means that point is not at the, um, the cosmological principle is invalid. And once the cosmological principle goes out the window, relativity goes out the window. So, um, I'm just, uh, I'm just, have I made the connection between the cosmological principle and the principle of relativity clear? That's what I'm trying to decide. I don't remember what all I've said. I've just been ranting and I can't remember what all I've said. So, um, they're, they're, they're connected. Trust me, they're connected. That's all I'm going to say. I may have said a valid reason why they are, but anyway, I'm done. Okay, yes, I'm back again. Yeah. Annoying, but um, I, I've got Relativity by Albert Einstein here. I thought it might, on, um, what is chapter? Is this? It's chapter 5 on the principle of relativity in the restricted sense. Here's what Albert Einstein says. If the principle of relativity were not valid, we should therefore expect that the direction of motion of the Earth at any moment would enter into the laws of nature, and also that physical systems in their behavior would be dependent on the orientation in space with respect to Earth. 
for owing to the alteration and direction of the velocity of revolution of the earth in the course of a year the earth cannot be at rest relative to the hypothetical system k zero throughout the whole year however the most careful observations have never revealed such anisotropic properties in terrestrial physical space i.e. a physical non-equivalence of different directions. This is a very powerful argument in favor of the principle of relativity. It says, if the principle... In, so, so basically that says, you'll, you'll notice in almost every sentence there, it talks about the motion of the earth. If the motion, of, you know, if the principle of relativity were not valid, we should therefore expect that the direction of motion of the earth at any moment and all and then goes on and then and also that physical systems in their behavior would be dependent on the orientation in space with respect to earth for owing to the alteration and direction of the velocity of revolution of the earth he's constantly harping on the motion of the earth and then he refers you know it's he, he's referring to the Michelson Morley experiment. He doesn't mention it. There, there's some debate whether he's actually referring to that and whether he was actually aware of them, but he, that's, that's what he's referring to. He's referring to interferometer experiments of Michelson Morley when he says, however, the most careful observations, Michelson Morley, have never revealed such anisotropic properties in terrestrial physical space. In other words, the motion he's been talking about here in almost every sentence prior to that. He's talking about the motion of the Earth, and then he says, you know, we've never been able to detect that motion. So, you know, that's a very powerful argument in favor of the principle of relativity. Therefore, you know, that still does not prove anything. Therefore, what I'm getting at, that's the connection with the cosmological principle. If, if, you, get out, if you get out there and disprove the cosmological principle, like I was talking about, um, then those Michelson... Uh, I lost my train of thought there. But um, anyway, he's constantly talking about... if the He constantly refers to the motion of the Earth. And he says, if the principle of relativity were not valid, you know, we would expect that we could um, detect the motion of the Earth. We can't detect the motion of the Earth, therefore the principle of relativity is valid. But that's all based on the assumption that we are not at the center of the universe. That's the problem. That's the connection with the cosmological principle. It's all based upon the assumption that we're not at the center of the universe. Um, you know, if the if the prince he he goes on and on about the motion of the Earth. He's constantly talking about. He's talking about the rotation, the, the orientation of the Earth, the rotation, the you know the motion of the Earth around the Sun. He's constantly talking about that. If if the principle of relativity were not valid, if the laws of physics were not the same in all reference frames, we should be able to detect the motion of the Earth. However, according to the Michelson-Morley observations, we have never detected the motion of the Earth. Therefore, the principle of relativity is correct. But that's based on the assumption that we're not at the center of the universe. Because if we are at the center of the universe, you would not expect to detect the motion of the Earth because it wouldn't be moving. So, so, so this is all based on the, uh, the principle of relativity because of that is basically based on the assumption of the truth of the cosmological principle. I, I'm not even sure the cosmological principle was around back in Albert Einstein's time, but it's, it's based on that. So if you can disprove the cosmological principle, you have basically disproven relativity and proven that we're at the center of the universe. So even if you're a relativist and you can you say you argue that uh well we can't disprove the principle of relativity, fine, you can definitely disprove the cosmological principle because it's 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 not even relativity's kind of above it. And if you yank the cosmological principle out from under it, from under relativity it goes away. And you can disprove the cosmological principle because it doesn't have anything to do with reference frames. It's talking about points in space. You know, the Earth looks like it's at the center of the universe from astronomical observations. Therefore, a point 1,600 light years away we're gonna, is going to look like it's at the center of the universe because of the cosmological principle. We're assuming it's truth. So, so if we go to those other points, statistically significant number, and find out that, hey... This point does not look like it's at the center of the universe. All these other 
the only point that, lo that we can find that looks like it's at the center of the universe is the Earth. Therefore, the cosmolog we must be at the center of the universe, and the cosmological principle is incorrect. And if, because of what I was saying, if the cosmological in is principle is incorrect, that automatically means that relativity is incorrect. The principle of relativity is incorrect. So, um, you know, because Einstein, be because Einstein chooses to say that the Earth is moving, it, it's like he he's he, you know he constantly mentions the motion and the rotation of the Earth in this. If the principle of relativity were not valid, we should therefore expect that the direction of motion of the Earth at any moment would enter into the laws of nature. You know, and that the also the physical systems and their behavior would be dependent on the on the orientation of space with respect to the Earth, for owing to the alteration and direction of the velocity of the revolution of the Earth in the course of a year, blah 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 blah. It's argument in favor of the principle of relativity. So he's constantly talking about the motion of the Earth. Like this, in a way, the principle of relativity is almost dependent upon the motion of the Earth. So it needs to be moving so that we can pretend that it's not moving. So the 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 Earth. Anyway, that's that's all I wanted to add. I just I think I said everything I wanted to say. But stay tuned. You never know. But um. Yeah, I think, uh, hopefully I made that clear, but anyway, I'm done for now. I'm back again, it's irritating, so what? Um, it's almost like what I was trying to get at is the motion of... Einstein depends upon the motion of the Earth and the fact that you cannot detect the motion of the Earth. He, he you know, he assumes that the Earth is moving. It, it's like the Earth, we know, he's, his logic is... We know the Earth is moving, but we cannot detect the motion of the Earth. The Michelson-Morley interferometer experiments, we cannot detect the motion of the Earth, but we know it's moving. So, you know, if we, if we know it's moving and we can't detect that motion, then the principle of relativity must be correct. But it's all based on the assumption if, you know, we know the Earth is moving. How do you know the Earth is moving? You're, you're, you're just, it's, it's like you're assuming that the earth is moving. You have no evidence that the earth is moving. You're assuming that the earth is moving to build up relativity, the principle of relativity. Uh, uh, and if the earth is moving, it must not be at the center of the universe. Because if, if, if it's moving, you know, even if it was at one time at the center of the universe, it wouldn't be now because, you know, it's it's moving. So, you know, even if it's at the center of the universe now, an hour from now, it's no longer at the center of the universe because the Earth is moving, right? So relativity depends upon the Earth not being at the center of the universe. The cosmological principle says that the Earth is not at the center of the universe, but you can disprove the cosmological principle very easily. It's probably going to take us hundreds of years to do it till we get we are able to like have warp drive or something and go to other parts of the universe to perform the observations. So, you know, for all you can do now is assume it's correct, but I refuse to assume things like that are correct because they can be disproven. And if you assume things like that are correct, you're committing yourself to assuming a whole lot of other things that might not be correct. It, it, it's, it's dangerous to assume those types of things are correct. So I choose not to assume those things, and I demand that we don't assume those things because the scientific method demands that we don't assume those things because the cosmological principle can be disproven. Therefore, the principle of relativity can be disproven. So I, it can be experimentally disproven. Therefore, I refuse to allow people to claim that relativity is true or is a valid theory or has been proven. I, I demand scientific rigidity or that we follow. We, I demand that scientists be scientists and follow the scientific method. I, I refuse to allow the assumption of a truth, the the assumption of a... I, I refuse to allow people to assume that you will get the results that you want from an experiment and pretend that you've carried out the experiment, which is basically what 
relativity does and what the cosmological principle does and I refuse to allow that that is not science that's not the scientific method that is against science that is scientifically illegal and and that's why you know yeah I'm a nut for arguing in favor of geocentrism so go go figure I'm a nut for demanding that scientists follow the scientific method is basically what you're saying when you call people like me a nut you're, you're, you're like calling me a nut for demanding scientific rigidity or, or thoroughness or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, now I'm done. Actually, after, after all that, I think I need to put a correction. I think I was ranting against the Copernican principle. I should have been saying, maybe I should have been saying cosmological after all, but I, th I think what I meant to say was a C Copernican principle. But, the, you know, the cosmological principle is like a generalization of the Copernican principle. Um, so, I guess they, let's just, for the sake of argument, let's just say they're interchangeable, but, you know, whichever one works for whatever argument I was just making, it's either the Copernican principle or cosmological principle, take your pick, should be obvious what I was talking about anyway, it kind of almost doesn't really change anything, whichever one you choose to say that I was ranting about, but I, I, um, I think I actually meant the Copernican principle, but cosmological principle, that worked just as well. Whatever. I just don't want to be accused of like, oh, you were you meant this and you were ranting against this. Therefore, everything you just said was invalid. No, it's not. Like it doesn't. Whether you choose to use the cosmological or the Copernican, it doesn't doesn't matter because like the cosmological principle is like a more generalized version of the the principle. So it's like either either one is fine for the argument. It, like e either one can be is can be disproven doesn't change what I just said so I just wanted to throw that correction in there just for the the nitpickers or you know I doubt anybody's even talking about even listening to me but who cares but whatever um, I'm just saying but that doesn't change anything though Copernican cosmological what's the difference no there's a difference but it doesn't really make any difference to what I was saying is what I'm getting at anyway I'm going to say one other thing I've never said before, just because I'm feeling combative right now, because I've worked myself up into a tizzy, but I'm, I'm going to make the statement that people who espouse relativity and practice relativity have no right to call themselves scientists, because at the crucial moment, they are bypassing the scientific method. And if, if, you, if you forego the scientific method and step past it to get to your theory... Uh, to get to the heart of your theory, you step past it and then start preaching your theory. You 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 cannot be a scientist because you have not gone through the scientific process to arrive at your theory. Or maybe I ought to say, you may be scientists, but the theory you are espousing is non -sci is unscientific. It is not worthy of a person who considers himself a scientist to be espousing or adhering to. It's fine if you want to say. You know, I th this could be true, but it's it's that's um could be true. Um, one day it's going to be proven. Uh, you know, once we move out into the galaxy, it'll be proven and everything. But until now, it's it's you know I can't even say it's correct or anything. Be honest. If you are honest, you will say relativity is not a scientific theory because it's not a scientific theory because like the the at the at its very gates when you walk into relativity at its very gate is the principle of relativity which has never been proven it has never gone through the scientific method i don't care if you point me at particle particle accelerator experiments and you know all all these other things or binary star observations and all this other you know the gps system or stuff I don't care if you point that all that at me. That's from within an Earth-based reference frame. Like I've said in other videos, I think I said it this one, right at the very gates, as you walk through the gates into relativity, at the very gates you have bypassed the scientific method, so you have no right to espouse the theory of relativity and claim that it is correct. By doing so, you are being dishonest. Be honest and say relativity is not is not proven but by by you know I, I'm correct in this you can't I almost you can't you almost can't argue with what I'm saying you can argue about it 
all you want, but the truth is the truth. You, you, um, I, I guess I don't want to be so harsh as to say you can't, you have no right to call yourself scientist, but, um, you, you can't, yeah, I mean, because obviously if you're doing experiments in other ways and stuff, you're probably following a scientific method, but don't espouse an unscientific theory that has not followed the scientific method. So, so I don't want to hear about relativity. Don't, everything you say about relativity, if that's your whole spiel, that that's all you have in your arsenal, you are practicing like witchcraft or something as far as I'm concerned because you're you're espousing a theory and, and trying to put a theory into practice that has not followed the scientific method. It's it's unscientific. Um so it's like it's might as well be witchcraft or something. So so you know if you want to be a scientist and practice witchcraft, um fine, but you know, if that's the only thing you're practicing then you're like you're just a like a voodoo priest or something. You're not a you're not a scientist. I mean, come on. I, I guess I shouldn't be that harsh, but that's that's the way it is. That's uh, th th there's no other way to say say it about something that bypasses the scientific method. And you you can't. I mean, you can try to convince me. I don't listen, say be close-minded and say you can't do this. But you know, if the truth is that relativity, at its heart, the most basic principle of relativity has not gone through the scientific method. You can't convince me that it has. It's like, don't think you can convince me of an untruth because it is, it is by, 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 by just assuming that the principle of relativity is true and the cosmological principle is true and everything, you are not following the scientific method. If, if you're assuming the truth of a hypothesis, you're just assuming the truth based on nothing else, you're just assuming the truth of a hypothesis that can be disproven, that can be empirically be disproven. You are not following the scientific method if you assume the truth of that and bypass the scientific method. I don't care if you want to whine that, oh, we're not going to be able to prove that but by your standards until we move out into the galaxy, so I'm just going to assume it's true. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not giving you mercy in that case. You're going to have to wait until we move out into the galaxy then. If, if that's what it takes to follow the scientific method, then you're going to have to wait. I don't want to hear any whining about, well, I'm just going to assume it's true because we can't move out into the galaxy yet. I don't want to wait hundreds of years to practice my life's work and to have it validated. You're going to have to. Yeah, like it, don't be. You can't be impatient like that. That's what I'm saying. You can't. So you can't be impatient like that and consider that you're following the scientific method or being scientific. So that, that's all I wanted to add. Now I'm done. All right. One last thing I want to say, and then I swear I will be done with this video. I just want to get this on the record. A, a quote, a usable quote. This is like you can quote me on this. As soon as you walk through the gates of relativity, or to walk through the gates of, as soon as you walk through the gates of relativity, you have surrendered your credentials as a scientist. That, that's that's you can quote me on that. What that that's the price of walk. That's like that's the price of walking through the gates of relativity is surrendering your scientific. you surrendering your credentials as a scientist. It's like it's like. There's the gates of relativity, and there's a doorman stand. There's a security guard standing at the gate, and as you walk toward it, you have to stop and like <clears throat> hand them your your ID card. Here's my ID card as a scientist. Now, now can I enter? That's what you have to do to step into relativity. That's that's what you do. You surrender. You surrender your credentials as a scientist at the gate. That's what relativity is. Hey, I lied. See, I'm not a man of my word. I swore I was. This was that was the last time I lied. Anyway, to continue that analogy, with the guard at the gates, you can you can stand at the gates all you want and say, you know what, I'm going to enter there when I don't have to give up my scientific credentials. Then, then I'll enter when that guard goes away. You can stand at the gate and say, oh, I want to go in there and everything. I want to accept relativity and go in there and everything. You know, but. I'm not going to do that until that guard goes away. I like what I see in there, but you know, as long as that guard is standing there waiting to confiscate my my scientific ID, I'm not going in there. You, you know, and eventually that guard will disappear. 
but he's not going to disappear until you know the, the scientific method has been gone over whatever anyway that's just like a quick analogy I decided to come up with but um, and the, the, the guard will go away eventually you can choose you can choose to wait until that guard goes away or you can go ahead and pass through but if you pass through you've got to give that guard your ID which is basically anyone that like makes the claim that relativity has been proven you know it's been a proven theory for a hundred years you know anyone that makes that claim that, that chooses to like sign on the dotted line and say you know relativity is supported by this evidence and everything as soon as you make that statement you walk you've walked through those gates and you've you've handed your you've handed your ID card as a scientist you've handed it over to that guard and you've stepped through the gates you you are no longer a card carrying scientist you are you are no longer on the same level as those scientists that are waiting at the doors of the gate and like chomping at the bit to go in but they refuse to go in until they till that guard has gone away you you have you have done that and that's like that's what the majority of scientists today have done they have stepped through that gate and surrendered their card they 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 can't wait they are impatient they are impatient and so they have given up their scientific integrity or their scientific id cards and they've passed through that door that's what it is. Now I'm done. I swear I'm done.